Hi, welcome to another Sunny Side Design tutorial. Today we're going to share how we took some thrift store bar stools and we did a little makeover on them. Yep, this project was so fun. So you may hear us mention Home Talk um, in the movie. We originally filmed this for Home Talk TV, so just beware that. Uh, <laughs> but check out this drastic makeover. You will love it. You'll see a supply list um, in the description and also there will be a link to our website where you can see still uh, still photos of this in project in, in the process yeah, if you want to see those those photos yeah. you'll be able to see those in the web or the blog post on this yeah all right this is the project we are working today on today we picked up these bar stools I picked up three of them at the thrift store the restore store actually in Park City which has fabulous furniture finds that are usually a little rough, um, but they are of really good quality. So they are in rough shape and we're gonna show you how we're gonna transform them. We're gonna do a little waxing, a little painting, and then show you how easy it is to reupholster. All right, let's get down here and get busy. We're gonna take off the fabric first. So the first thing we need to do, as you can see, this is where the welting um, comes together to begin. So I'm just gonna use this tack remover, removal tool and I'm gonna pry that fabric on, off. And this is always just glued on. So once you get the corner, you can just give it a yank and pull it off. Yeah. This may be the easiest part <laughs> of the project. <laughs> As I say that, and it was difficult. All right. If you have allergies or something though, you might want a mask or something if it's a really filthy piece. That's pretty filthy. Yeah, it, it is really filthy. Kind of disgusting. You want to wash your hands when you get finished with this one. All right, the welting's off. Now we are ready to dig into getting the upholstery off. I'll start here. And I'm actually just going to pull the fabric off. I saw it start to pull up. Okay. We're essentially going to be removing all of the staples at this point so that we have room to secure our new fabric with. Once all of the fabric has been removed, we will begin to remove all of the staples. We're gonna use our tack remover tool here. Um, I will say also that um, a small screwdriver will work, but I do like the tack remover you can tool. See, sorry, I'm oh, butting in. No, go ahead. Sometimes the staples will break and that is okay. You're going to use needle nose pliers to pull out the staples anyway. Maybe. <laughs> I'll back up in case you wax me. <laughs> it may happen. Sometimes if you twist them as well. Yeah, okay. Them out. Sorry. Continue what you were saying. Oh, I was just saying you can use a, a small screwdriver. And, you know, I've done upholstery for years and I'm not a professional. You know, I just do it on my own. Um, but once I came across this little tool and I found it at Joann's and just the home decorating section. Same. And it was like $3 or something. Um, it the points help get it behind the staple a little easier than a screwdriver does. And I will say that of this entire project, this is the most challenging yeah. part, is removing these darn staples. So you just need to be patient, take your time and dig into it. We also discovered that this is a hardwood that we're working with, so the staples are actually in here really hard. Yeah. So the harder the wood, the harder to get the staples out and in. Um, see, they so, keep breaking. Yeah. But that's all right, we'll just... We'll get them. Take these and um, just keep breaking again. We'll but them. like I say, if you use kind of a twisting motion, it will pull right out. So we okay. will just go around the whole we'll chair, get the all chair. of the staples out. As you can see now that we have removed all of the staples and we are getting ready to put our finish on the chair. So I'm just gonna give it a good wipe down. And we are coming to you today from Layton, Utah please comment in our comment section to tell us where you're tuning in from. We'd like to know where you're from and um, anything about yourself you'd like to share. Oh, as you can see here, we've still got the price tag on. We paid $12 for these chairs at the Restore store up in Park City. And we believe that these probably came from either Restoration Hardware or Pottery Barn, and they probably were pretty pricey chairs to begin with. So I believe they're in great, con great condition um, at least solid wood, the wood is solid, but we're gonna get that all fixed up and so they will be better than new. How about right. that? We have masked off 
the wood around the caning. And we did this only on the back side. So you can see that the chair just goes in here. So on the front side of the chair, we're just gonna cut in really carefully, but you could also tape that off. So um, we like to use green frog tape. It just has the best seal. I don't know, we just have really good results with frog tape. So we love that. So we will um, paint the caning and then show you our next step. All right, we've got the chair here. We're gonna use um, chalk paint. We're using bare chalk paint. We happen to think the quality of this is really good and it's less expensive. We love how rich and creamy bear paint is. It's our favorite. Okay, so we're gonna do this together. I'm gonna to paint on the front side. Steph is gonna paint on the back side. She's gonna catch any runs that come through and you can see on my front side that she's pushing paint through as well. So it's, it works we're working good. together. Working together, getting it both. I'm just gonna kind of cut in around the edge first. So while we do this, um, we would just like to uh, have you comment on maybe some of your favorite thrift store yard selling finds. Do you love to go out and do that and find some treasures? We sure do. Um, yes, we love it. When summer comes around and it's yard sale season, oh, that is the best to go out there and find some treasures. I was trying to think what my favorite treasure is. I've picked up so many pieces. It's kind of embarrassing, I think, if you... <laughs> If went, you saw our basements. Our basements. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them. Both of them. You know, we can't turn down a, can't pass piece up a good deal. of furniture that is beautiful, that just needs some love. But And eventually we'll get around to all of them. Yeah, eventually we will. But usually we pick them up for next to nothing. And so we picked up, gosh, we've got a dining room table right now that we would like to get working on. Six bucks. Six or seven dollars we paid for that at the thrift store. And yes, it needed some major work. But... It'll be worth it. It will be worth it. And so, you know, so comment on what some of your favorite finds are. Yard selling or thrifting. I also, I was thrifting with a friend, gosh, it's been a couple years ago, and I haven't used them yet, but I will. But I, we were looking for China for a party that we were gonna throw, and um, some guy was selling two brass beds, twin beds, matching twin beds. And you know, it was kind of hard to come by matching. They were antique. They were antique. And I, I really was not in the, you know. In the market for a bed. I wasn't in the market for a bed, but I couldn't pass him up. I'm like, he's like, well, what will you pay for these? And I said, $25. And he took it. So I've got two. <laughs> two beds. Two old beds that I haven't used yet. But you know what, someday, I just might, you know, have a guest room down in the basement and I will use them. And I paid $25 for both. So how could I turn those away? So we're going back and forth. Notice our method is back and forth, back and forth. And yeah, I think normally when you paint, you would want to be very cautious of direction. Okay. Uh, but this with, we'll just show you a little bit here. Just with all the different crossovers of the caning, you kind of have to work it go in. all sorts of ways to get each of the areas covered. Okay, and I'm gonna spin it around so you can watch Steph on this side. We're gonna give it a total spin. There we go. All right, you can see her working on that side and I'm gonna work on the front. Still, or right here. So one of my favorite for thrift store finds, I was doing a car themed bedroom for my little guy and I had this vision to do a tool chest dresser. And so we went to our local thrift store and I found the most amazing piece. It was actually a lateral filing cabinet, but it was wood, which was also kind of different. And the edges were rounded. I mean, it looked like it should be a tool chest. So it really did. Other than the fact that it was brown and <laughs> a filing cabinet, <laughs> it looked like a tool chest. So I picked that up for 15 bucks and it is probably one of my favorite little transformation so and not only did she of course repaint it with a shiny red like a toolbox but she also put casters on it so yeah. it's so cute raised it up just like it's a real tool chest it's so cute all right i think we're done with that section so we'll show you there it Give is it a little spin should we turn it the other way as well yep. and we'll let this dry and then we'll be on our next, next step, step is wax 
Okay. Right. We are ready to begin the waxing process. We decided not to paint the wood. We're just going to apply this white wax, which is going to get into the grooves and the details. And this wood has um, kind of a, a rougher grain to it, so it's going to really accept that wax. So we're using bare white wax. Once again, we, we like the bare stuff. The product is good, but it is less expensive. So when you're waxing, you want to use a waxing flat brush. waxing brush. It's similar to a stencil brush. And we're gonna just use a circular motion and we're gonna push the wax into the wood. And you see how that it's gonna go into the carvings. You probably, did you even notice that there was carvings there in the corners? But all the way down the leg, we've got little grooves that are cut into it. And this is just gonna accentuate those grooves as we work it in. Um, what finish would you guys use? Would you use a wax? This kind of gives it a natural look. You could also paint your wood. What do you guys like? Yes, please comment and let us know. And if you are liking what we're doing here and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and follow us. On Home um, Talk and go to our website. Yeah, please go to our website. It's to the sunny side.com With the number two. With the number two. And you can find us also YouTube, well, Facebook. You can see our links with our picture. Yes. All of that. the comments. Yes, all of that you is there. You can go see that tool chest dresser, the bed, all those things we already talked about. Go see how we did them. So we're yes. going to finish this whole chair and then we will come we'll back, come back. to the next step. The entire chair has been waxed. We also applied wax to the caning area just to seal the chalk paint. That will help keep it clean and free from grime. Now we need to buff it. So take a cotton rag, an old t-shirt, and you're just going to rub the wood. It's really simple to do. This just takes off any excess wax and it just gives it a little bit of a sheen. Not too much, but it just gives you that finished look. You can see that there. So we'll do the whole chair and show you our next step. We now have put that batting on. Remember, this is totally optional. We have just stapled it in a few places here just to hold it. It will get more staples in it as we put the fabric on, but we don't want there to be staples in the way when we put the fabric. This is the old grimy seat that we took off. We kind of used this as a pattern for our batting and our fabric as well. Just laid it out and then cut our fabric uh, about two to three inches bigger than the actual fabric was. So we've got something to grip and pull from. Right, we've got um, a Sharpie mark that I've marked center. Um, because we've got a definite pattern on our fabric, it's a stripe and I wanna make sure that it's even on both sides. I've marked center on the front and the back of the chair. So I'll have a spot to line up my fabric on. So here's my fabric. Oops, I better look and see which side is right side. This is the right. Okay, I'm gonna place it on here. I used my pattern from the, what we took off and I've cut slits where there were slits that's going to go around the wood. So we're gonna tuck those back in there. I want to make sure that I've got my center black stripe lined up with the center of that Sharpie line. I'm gonna do the same thing on the back. Make sure it's lined up in the center. Okay, that looks great. We have placed three staples along the front here to just hold that front piece in. We've centered it on that Sharpie line to make sure our pattern is centered on the chair. And we're gonna flip around and show you how we're gonna do it on the back side. So we're gonna take the staple gun and we just have this little regular, it's not a, a pneumatic one or anything fancy. Just hand, hand. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna pull it as tight as I can. This is probably the most challenging part. As holding, I'm gonna push it down against the wood this is where another set of hands comes in handy, really. And, and I'm gonna helping. plop it. <laughs> All right, um, I'm just gonna grab my hammer and I'm gonna just tap it in all the way. Remember, this is a really hard wood and sometimes those staples don't go in all the way. So that's gonna hold it while we make some little cuts here to get this to totally fit around the wood. We don't want any puckering, so we will, yeah, just make sure that this fits nice and sturdy. It's all hold tight. Okay, so I'm, I've already had a little V cut right there. I'm gonna cut it a little bit more. Didn't wanna cut it too far to begin with. I'm gonna tuck that inside like that. 
And then I'm gonna take this piece here and I'm gonna fold it under so I don't have a raw edge showing. Okay, and pull it down. So I gotta fold it a little bit further, I can see. We just want it to line up with this edge of the wood right there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna do the same with this side. I'm gonna pull it and I'm gonna just, whoops, my hand's gonna get in the way. Yes, please. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry about, about that. that. Yeah, my <laughs> hand's in the way. Okay, but I've trimmed it a little bit. I'm gonna tuck that inside there again. Make a fold here. Pull that down to the side. Okay, that looks like that's pretty good. Okay, well, I'll do the other side and then we'll come back and show you how we staple that right, down. Steph is gonna pull and I'm going to put the staple in. I'm gonna push it right down the staple gun right to the bottom edge of where the lip of the wood is and squeeze and get it in there. And it definitely, <laughs> it helps to have two hands, yeah. two sets of hands to do this. One to pull, one to staple. All right, you can see that we need to tap those in with a hammer. Didn't go in quite all the way. If I had a pneumatic one, it would, they would shoot right in, but I don't. So we're going to do the rest of the back side and show you how we do one complete side. To do each side, it's important to put one staple in the center to hold your fabric into place, having someone pull it tight, and then you'll want to place another couple ones on the sides just to hold it into place, and then you'll fill all of that in with staples. So my mom's going to come in here and put staples in right here, and we're going to show you how to do the corner to get that folded in. Guess I need to hold yeah, this for you, sorry. sorry. And while she's doing this, we just want to remind you that we do have a materials list for everything that we are using today. Um, it can be found in the, right above the comments. So you can have a link to everything we've used. So she didn't go quite to the edge there and we're gonna show you how we Deal with that. <laughs> I'm also going to point out, see they didn't go in all the way, but we'll hammer, we'll, we'll hammer those in and it'll be fine. Okay, let's pull the chair around so you can see the corner. Um, what we're going to do is just tuck this in like you think of you're wrapping a present. Pull Keep it, it nice in, and flat. And then I'm just going to pull this down like that. And because we don't want to have a bunch of staples lined up underneath here, we're just going to put one through the whole thing. So yeah. once we've got it lined up, I'll take the staple gun. Oops. And pop in a few here. Okay, so that's right. a nice... Get a nice neat corner yep. that way. So we're gonna finish the rest of the chair with staples. The fabric has all been secured with staples. You can see them all on the front. We've done all sides of the chair. Now we need to just put the piping on and this is super easy. We're gonna start at the back of the chair um, just like it was before. So we'll have our start and our end piece of the piping in the same spot in the back corner so it won't even really be noticeable. And all you need is a hot glue gun to put this on. Super easy. It's kind of crazy how strong the bond is with fabric too. So we're just gonna go around the whole chair and we'll show you the finished product. We have now finished with the trim around the chair. We completed um, it by gluing it right where we began at the starting point there on the back of the chair. We'll just show you the finish now. We love that um, kind of weathered look that the wax gave the chair. Love the black and white upholstery and the little bit of white on the caning. Super really cute. Pleased, really pleased with the way this turned out. I just love the way these chairs turned out. They have that French country look, which is something I just love. Plus, they're in black and white, and I love black and white.
Yep. Let us know what you guys think down in the comments below. We love hearing from you. We do. Um, we also are going to link another upholstery tutorial to this one. If you are interested, go check that one out. That one is, I think, a little bit easier than this one. Not that either were difficult, but the other one's a little more forgiving. The, with the, the fabric, fabric we used. was more forgiving. This one, yeah. we had to be really precise on the corners, but it's good to learn how to do yeah. both. So there's a couple different techniques that we'll share with you. Um, but thanks so much for watching. We love having you here. Again, share your comments, ask questions. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and tap that bell notification so you know when our new movies come out. And be sure to also follow us on social media. All of our icons are there. And as always, here at Sunnyside Design, we hope to bring your home to the sunny side of the street.